Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another day. Welcome back to another tire quick view. We're quick viewing tires today because, well, that's a, that's a thing that we do here. So today we're, we're dropping down. This is the, un, un, this would be in the category of unofficial class zero, which I mean, isn't really a thing from what I'm told. I'm not a hundred percent up on Sorka rules, nor would I ever hope to be because I don't think you should get scale points for putting a 3d printed cooler in the back of your vehicle. Drive better. Anyway, before it turns into a rant, today we're testing some, these are like definitely below class one. Uh, we're in the, in the sort of class zero range. We'll get a, we'll get a, a specific sizing on these. We've got a mini pin and honestly, it's, uh, I was going to say pretty rare, but I think it's never been seen to have this much sidewall lug. Like this, there is no differential between the sidewall and the tread. This is just lug. These are very luggy. Uh, they run on a very small wheel. This is a 155, so you're going to have some fitment. Also, the hex engagement is very shallow. So if you have any, 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 any sort of larger knuckle weight, anything like that, uh, there's a, there's a chance these aren't going to fit. They do come with added bonuses. And atop of that added bonus, well, let me, let me, let me scale them up so we'll know. They look to me to be in that, I was going to say 98, but they're right at 101 on height, which is right about that 393 size in about there, De under four inches, uh, 98 millimeters is a fairly common size. And they are just where my, the Canyon's homebrew tire sizer bottoms out. So about... 30. Honestly, if we put any pressure on the pins, I would call them like 34. Uh, the tire sizer only goes down to 36. So we're, we're looking pretty narrow and pretty short. They mount via friction. Um, the, the pins actually continue all the way down the sidewall and like actually embed themselves in there. Now, if you're using a clamping beadlock, your mileage may vary. The, the wheels that came included with the tires, uh, they, there is a very stout engagement. There's no, there's no fasteners. There's no adhesive. They are, they are pressure fit and they, they appear to fit pretty well. So they are, they are small, but baseline has been upgraded to, to show to be the, the tester of all tires that they, they don't exactly really fit out, fill out the wheel well. So we are going to have some potential clearance issues. Baseline is fresh off of a, of a gearbox refresh. So that, that should help him and us out. I did have to remove the brake rotors from his front. He usually has the Enduro SE brake rotors and the brake rotor is effectively the same exact internal dimension as the rim. So. Uh, it would be nice to see a, like a 1.9 version of this, maybe something a little taller, get us a little more clearance. We're running what is, I think the narrowest tire that we've ever run. Uh, the pin seeker is around a 36, even the little 155 general grabbers from like the trail runner, uh, night runner, those, the ones that are running the little baby, uh, grabber ATs, even those are close to 40 millimeters wide. So these are pretty narrow, pretty narrow, uh, very festive in the coloring. And if the documentation is to be believed, they, they come in color pairs. We have two orange, which are listed as red. We have two orange. I'm going to just call them orange and two blue because, uh, this will give us underdrive overdrive as, in, in the spectrum of light, uh, red travels faster than blue. Blue is is almost the slowest. Violet is the slowest light. Red is the fastest. So with blue and orange, we're going to have a little overdrive instituted because the front wheels are going to spin ever so slightly faster than the rear ones. We will see if that impacts the overall performance. And the only way to really test these is to take them out to the rocks. I think their mixed surface performance is going to be pretty good. The pin feels... The pins feel pretty good 
and we'll see how they do on the rocks. We've got the regular, I've got the, I got the dry erase in the hoodie pocket. We are ready to hit the 10 stations of the tire test protocol. And we are going to see how these do today here on the course. It's a little, it was a little, it was a little wet out there. But I think, as I said, mixed surface is, I think, where these are going to shine. I don't know how their pure rock performance is going to go because we may have a PSI issue with the tire being more, more pin than anything. There's a lot of empty space, but there's a lot of pin. And the contact points are going to be very small. I'm going to try to figure out what to keep talking about while I fumble to get this pin in with ice cold hands. It's not cold enough in here to see my breath, but it's it's cold. It's going to be cool outside. It's pretty cool outside. And the ground will be pretty moist. So we will see how these do. I mean, they look a treat, do they not? The fronts have a real glow. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see those out in the sunlight. Let us see how baseline fares on this set of, uh, I would go almost so far as to say micro pins. Uh, very coney, very conical, the tread. It's, a, it's an unusual tread pattern, and we have the full coverage on the sides, so we'll see how that affects side lug. And side hill should be very interesting as well. The compound is fairly firm, but they don't have a, a tremendous amount of, of lateral stability. We will see how that impacts. So join me, if you will, out on the course, and we will run this through the par protocol and see what score we end up with on these micro pins. It is wetter than anticipated, but I think these are going to do, these are going to do A-OK -okay as we don't have the usual worries of water with an open cell foam. Uh, these tires run sans insert. They are intended not to be run with an insert. So I think they're going to be fine. And yes, in the sun, the, the crystalline look and or structure of them, we're not 100% sure what they're actually composed of. The manufacturer does not indicate, but they uh, they were throwing some stuff around on the drive back, and uh, they and baseline are already pretty wet. I'm gonna have to get used to that sub 419 sizing. Little wet, and I'm worried that the we're not getting slide back, but it's really it's gonna be tough for me to tell. What is an issue of not enough forward drive and what is an issue of, hey, idiot, you're stuffing the pumpkins into everything because you're sitting so low. So both of those are potential possibilities. Let's try a little more, a little more aggressive application of throttle. Not remarkably well here. I, I can't quite get enough to pull over the lip here at Slick Rock. They genuinely, it's that side lug, continuation lugs, perhaps. They're doing, they're doing a lot of work, but very slippery. I don't know if that's just that they don't like the wet that much. We get some real semi prompt let me, let me try to shuttle over to this little more dry spot. Getting a little drop back there, but like like some decent position ability i think i think it, it goes back to what i was worried about where we've got the relationship of negative space to pin and i think that the pin is a little too conical like if they were cropped off at the top or if they were a step pin i think we could get a little more drive here on on stuff like this they handle low speed pretty well also to factor in. The combo is very light relative to, he's usually runs a kilo of wheelos with canyon mediums, cut canyon trails, and some very hot, heavy hot storm alloy wheels. So we've lost a, a fair decent amount of unsprung weight. So we will see how that impacts overall. They just, they don't strike me as having enough, what, right there, see that was mechanical. So I don't know if Slick Rock is the best indicator. We kind of got over the beam there. They just, they don't have quite enough to make it up the little wall at the end. That could be a wetness problem. So there'll be a little asterisk there as we're not on a fully dry surface. 
We'll see how we do across here. Not a ton of compliance. These are strange, like difficult to compress vertically, but they're relatively soft laterally. We will see if they are too soft laterally and that impacts his ability to side hill. I honestly, side hill here being that, that back and forth play between grip and slip. Like again, here, this isn't tread or compound. This is a very short tire. We need a guy with, with lots of class one experience to come out here and, sh and show us how it's done. We do as best we can. I'm trying to use that side lug as much as possible. Got a little, got a little holler from him there. Yeah, again, there. It's just pure mechanical. And that lack of unsprung is, I think is what's a problem. Like we cut loose there ah, because of the lack of weight. It really threw the top over. Yeah, we can really get some spin. It could be, this could be a compound issue. They might be a more of a dry tire, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll head on to the next one. I, I ordinary, I mean, I give out a score and yes, ordinarily we, we've got to, we, we've got to, we've got to be, we've got to be clear and we've got to be consistent. So if you can, I, I'm going to, we're going to go the 7.5 on forward drive here, but with an asterisk, I'm actually going to write an asterisk on the card because I don't know if it's the, the humidity. It is cold. It's about 46 in freedom units right now. So that's a little cold. This compound might be a little firmed up. We'll see as we go along, if we get into obstacles that are more in the sun, we'll see if that helps at all. We're heading over to Daphne's and we'll see how it does there. That's more of a position ability test and we'll see how well these do. Ordinarily, uh, we wouldn't have this amount of wetness on the ground, but we can't, you know, it's like the old Top Gear star in a reasonably priced car. We can't, we can't predict. Yeah, see, they're just, they're really light and they kind of have a little, they have a little too much rebound. They are ventilated, but there's a little too much rebound. So it is at best suboptimal conditions here for the crystal, the crystal pins. Gotta try to get those little, little 101s over. They, they feel like we're pretty wet over here as well. They feel like they want to pull over, but then I get the, I get the sliders right in. All right, let's let's try let's try a shot up here, straight up here. Yeah, part of me tells me they should be better at like a medium speed, but they're pretty good. At the at the really low stuff, I just saw water dripping off of his back bumper, so it's it's pretty wet out there, and I'm I can't tell from the angle. I think we're getting some slipper action. Oh, I sh I should have stayed in that. Yeah, if you get really bound up, you can get the the. We get a little bit of rim slippage. Yeah, right there. Really stick in the front. Oh, don't get stuck on the sign. Yeah. I think the height is as much of a problem as anything. Uh, I would love to see this in a 435, 445. That low speed is honestly pretty good. A little crossbound there. There's where that weight is coming in. That's way better than I would have expected on that side. You need to get that side pin into play. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they kind of do well across a range of throttle inputs. Uh, the, the slippy wheel, probably a negative in some situations, but in others, I, I think that might help. I'm not gonna dock 
as hard as we would ordinarily for the, ah, the somewhat failure on this side because, okay, if I swing real wide around here, I'm still, I'm still getting the sliders in. Come on, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Yeah, I just, he's a 12A wheelbase and similar to fellow Canyon resident Ruby, running a really tiny tire, 385, in that 385, 393 range on a vehicle with a 12A wheelbase, 324, 328 wheelbase, it's tough. Uh, because you just have so much in the middle. We don't have a kicked skid. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit higher on this one. Like I said, we'll go we'll go with a seven. We'll go with a seven point seven, which I think is fair. Again, if it was a little drier, we might see something a little different. But there's no way to know. And we're gonna need enough. We're gonna need enough grip and clearance to get onto the side hill. There we go. And then we're gonna need enough grip to progress across, but we're gonna need enough slip to make sure that the front and rear ends are kind of independently positionable. We will see if there's too much collapse and not enough weight. We've got, we've got more slide than is optimal there, I would say. Put it back down, put it back down. I think that was a little mechanical interference there as well. I got all down a little too far. That, that rear pumpkin, I just keep looking at that rear pumpkin and it is very close to the ground. Decent amount, we're not getting as much lug fold as I thought. I do think that the sidewalls are folding over a good bit, but as I said, it just needs to be the right amount of grip and the right amount of slip. Go real slow here. Nope. Okay, we fall in, but we should be able to position that back. It's just the tiniest bit, too much slip, not enough grip. But again, I think the, because we're, we're mechanical right there. It, it, it's just guiding that front end on that rocket. And I kind of, yeah, you see where we're caught over the lip now. I kind of can't get off of it. And we'll fall down there. We'll give him, we'll give him one more shot at this. I'm also interested to see how these sort of season in. How, how are they gonna do? That's not bad there. This could be manifesting the too much, we've got too much wheel speed in the front relative to the rear with the color shift. Uh, I, I don't know. It just, it seems like we have really disparate levels of traction between front and rear. We're getting Almost too much grip in the front and not enough grip in the rear. Let's see if we can stay up high. I don't want to slide down into that stripey rock down there. See if we can stay up high or if there's not enough weight to keep us in place. Yeah, right here, see that front, driver front is pulling too hard relative to what we're getting from the guys in the back. Now, I did, I did contemplate flipping them blue in the front because we're only talking about a, a oh there it is we're only talking about a small differential in the underdrive overdrive right and he already runs 12 percent rear underdrive so it might have taken him down to 10 i don't i don't know if we're even going to get into that two percent range but what i said i said seven seven at daphne's i would go i, I would say that you've got to manipulate it there the, again we talk about uh Walk in the plank, we talk about balance beam, we talk about tightrope, we talk about a razor's edge. These are somewhere in that tightrope range of where you have to find your traction. I'm gonna go with a nice even eight on the side hill because they're pretty good. They did not collapse over as much as I thought. Again, we would have to put a little asterisk because of the wetness. I'm not sure how big of a part the dampness is playing, but I think they're, they're holding their own on the day. We'll roll then into the beast and uh, the tires have not gotten any drier. It is, we definitely hit the dew point last night. It is very wet. The sun is coming up and we are looking at, it is going to be 20 degrees freedom units hotter today than it was yesterday. So give this about five or six hours and we'll have dried out reasonably, but 
you got to take what you're given. And I think it's just that the compound doesn't really, well, then again, prove, you know, prove me wrong. Pull, pull it over, pull it over. Okay, here's the lightness. Do we have enough traction to get the, the rear up over the ledge? Again, we, we get into a mechanical. It seems like we're, we're going to chalk it off on the day to uh, hmm, driver inconsistency as I think in many instances the compound has enough. But as soon as I find the spot where like we'll get across here and I'll feel like, oh, I almost have enough to pull the rear end over. Now the pumpkin's stuck in. So we can just keep shuttling back and forth, back and forth. I get to the rock on one side. I ping off of it. And honestly, they're good up to like a mid throttle point. They don't like like a lot of throttle rolled in. Try it straight up on the front side. This, it, we haven't gotten enough sun into it to really dry it out. So again, pumpkin all the way in. Okay, try coming around this side. We might be looking at a tire that just wants it to be dry. Contrary to what I, I would have thought, like, these aren't going to care. It's that mini pin. They should clear well. It's like we, ju we have just almost enough. Yeah, and then again, you saw that hard nose pivot. That's pumpkin. It's, you know, we're just augering it in. Not quite, oh, glimmers, crystalline glimmers of hope. But as soon as I get to the spot where I think I'm where I need to be, we just end up flopping off. Oh, the se Whew. let's hope the self-writing gets better over when we go to do that. We'll see how wet the ground is, but... They have a real rounded profile, and that generally doesn't bode well for self-riding. Uh, so over here at the Beast, uh, we're gonna have to do the 7.5 like we did at Slick Rock. And again, an asterisk next to that. Is it the wetness? And this might be the toughest test the crystal pins faced on the day, as uh, when we go to, we do a left side and a right side, and when we go to do the right side, we have to, we, we try to get through a gate. We also, we have to pull up about a four inch of vertical. And I, I just, I, 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 I almost, I almost said I can't get the belly over. And uh, I, 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 di I did. I almost couldn't get the belly over. Ugh. More Lexan noises than one would anticipate because these Lexan noises don't come from the tire. I think the rear end it's too far left. Let's see if I can reposition. They they position reasonably well. There's a lot of rebound to them. I get sort of the the inkling of the flavor of the Proline insert when not paired with a Proline rim. So the the inner of the dual stage is not just overly firm, but that particular type of foam, whatever they call that foam, it has a lot of rebound to it. These feel similar in that way. And honestly, I, I think that we would almost have enough. Oh, they're almost there, but, but we're just, we're just mechanicaled out. It, they, they're, they're so low that uh, to all of, to all of you class zeros out there, God bless you. I. It is not in my wheelhouse to, to figure out. I'm, I'm so comfortable on a 465, 475. I'm, I'm working on my class one skills, you know, but these at 101 millimeters, these are short. And that's 101 millimeters, including the pin. So when we get any amount of compression in them, they're probably in the mid 90s and that is that is very short and again just mechanical I'm trying to do stuff where we get positioned 
not having to worry about getting I'm either getting a bumper hung or I'm getting an or, or I'm getting a, a pumpkin hung up I'm getting some I'm dragging the sliders I'm dragging the center chassis we have a lot of mechanical interference here and at low speed with nothing in their way like that's okay that is okay and all right let's see how see if we can cut it back no, they don't. They just don't have quite enough. We're gonna. We're gonna knock that if we, unless we can. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Ah. Thought we might be able to get through it. You know, it. Appropriate that they are crystalline because we see these, we see these shimmers and glimmers again on that. Despite it not being remarkable, uh, I'll go seven seven. On that. I'll go, I'll go, uh, that's a solid 7-7. Seven, seven. We're in full campfire mode right now. Uh, the the side, the part of me facing northwest, west-northwest is cold, and the part behind me with the rising sun is hot. You can see the mottled cow pattern that we've got going from dry rock, wet rock. See that position ability? Come on, get over, get over, get over, get over, get over the top, get over the top. Now it seems like the script has flipped and we have a little too much drive out of the rear end. Oh, over, over it. And mechanical. That that pulled that line. That's that's exactly where I want to pull. Oh. Again, is it wetness? Is it, is it the included wheel combo? I don't know. Oh, we're gonna get to throw a self right. In. That's not bad. It's not bad. It would need more wheel speed because these are so short. He basically has a wheel speed set up for a taller tire. You know, the open ground speed of this with how short they are is very noticeable. Managed to keep the bumper out there. We've gotten a little bit of mud from that. Oh, that's, that's, that's quite good. And again, we make this, I can see the body right behind the, what would I guess be the, on an extended cavity, what, but the C pillar, it's just, it's just stuck in. The tires can't generate enough. So if we get him off to this side, Oh um, ah! Uh, I can see, I can basically see it happening. I can see it happening. So we've established early from Slick Rock not a ton of forward drive, and oh man, that was a pretty good bump. That was pretty good, and we didn't get the fallback that we were expecting. Oh, they are so asterisk again. Uh, they feel these are much more for dry, for dry. They clear remarkably well. We picked up a bunch of mud, and because the sidewall hasn't really been engaged, they're still pretty loaded up. But the front cleared quite well, and I am taken by, oh, unintentional self-right operation here. It's, it's honestly, it's not bad. I, I anticipated, you, you can see them really, that front tire is doing all the work on that self-right. I thought it was gonna be much worse on the self-right. And I thought the bump was going to be very bouncy. But instead, the bump, when you can get the bump clear, the, the bump is good. Like it stays way flatter than I thought it would. I, don't, I didn't know if we were getting out of that. All right, I, I wanna see if we can get any donkey out of it. I gotta come in more oblique. I gotta keep, 101 millimeters, I gotta keep straight to the self right. It's good, it's good. That, it's, it's better than bad. It is definitely good. Okay, I need to try to get up this one. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Shuttle it over, there we go, right? That bump is real nice. That bump is real nice. So, 
per, perhaps most surprisingly, it is definitely getting better as we go on. And that, okay, that's not the surprising part. The surprising part was the bump in the self right, which are genuinely good. Basically better than it has done at anything else. That bump, I mean, you have to get yourself into a spot where full bumpers, fenders, the whole deal. You get right here, back it out, get to right about there. That is solid. That is a truly solid bump and, and quiet. Nice and quiet. Let me get let me get one more self right in. I would actually, I wonder, can we can we come in from the other side? I want to see I want to see what kind of load up we get on the tire on a single bump. Well, there's some mud. Yeah, right there. Again, that low weight. These are pretty easy to. That's that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I haven't been writing numbers down for a while, so we'll, we'll take a pause here to, uh, to write some numbers down. What'd I say? Uh, Beast was a 7.5, Oblivion, we go 7.7. .7. Daphne's third, oh. We can't give it a 7.5 because we got mechanical and we got, I'm gonna go 8.0 on that one. That one felt really good. I'm gonna go and, I'm gonna go an 8.6 on the self right, and I'm gonna go an 8.8 .8 on the bump. That bump was, that bump was properly solid. If we've got a puddle, at the foot of the teardrop, which we probably will. Uh, we're really going to get to see how well this tire loads and unloads. We've got a decent amount of mud there in the tread, but because of the height of the, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a micro pin. There's so many of them, but based on the height of the pin, they clear pretty quick and he does pretty well, reasonably loaded. And based on a tire that doesn't have the most forward drive, Probably not gonna hurt it that much. I don't know. I was surprised here. We might be surprised there. So the puddle has indeed soaked down, but you, oh, look at it, right, yeah, yeah. The, the part of the surface that he's on right now is very soupy. Oh, these, yeah, you can see the, this is, this is compound a little bit. The center rows will really load up and you'll get almost nothing out on those shoulder lugs, which I think is good. That will mean that the shoulder lugs will clear more quickly, and it has long been my assertion that the shoulder lug is the lug doing all the work. I just have to figure out what the line is to get the belly over, and I think it's over here maybe. Try a little, another little bump. Get that side, I want that, there it is right there. It is, an, a, it is a wonderfully maneuverable tire. Uh, I would like to see, get it, yeah, nice. The, the self right is, de, it's its best score and I think it's, is it? It's its second best score and I think it's, I think it's gonna stay there. Uh, we honestly, this is a mixed surface dry tire. I think we have, we're suffering on performance a little bit because of the wet and then, oh, I, I had that. I I just I didn't think I was gonna be able to make it. So I I cut throttle a little early. Look at that that boy is look at that. We got we got a full donut. The all the all the red is gone out of that front now. Yeah, because over here, as I had said on rock, they respond best to like moderate to low throttle. They're pretty good at this like really low creep down here. In the in the mixed stuff in in the in the dirt and here in this case in a very muddy situation, they're pretty happy with some like medium to high throttle level. I like to see a tire that responds well across a range of throttle inputs. And yeah, I would go. I'm gonna give it an 8.0 here. Uh, and again. It's just riddled with asterisks because I think if the surface was dry, I think we would get in a completely different result. Well, maybe not completely different. We would get a notably different result. What that is, I don't know. I don't, I don't have six hours to, to wait for the course to dry out. So we're trying to dodge these puddles on the ground as I don't think, I don't think wet performance is going to be remarkably good, but I also don't think that mud loaded is really going to impact forward drive at all. And we're mechanical again. 
Awesome. Yeah, they feel they feel largely the same. There's a little slipperiness there. I think I think that I think the crystal pins are definitely more geared towards dry days. Surprising. Oh, but like right there. So a little bit more weight driving down, a little bit of a heavier wheel tire combo there. And they do act a little firm. Baseline is pretty light, five, just under five and a half pounds. So even if we were like, I would say another pound, I don't think it would impact the side hilling too much, but I think it would be enough to get a bit more compliance out of the tire. We don't have to worry about the hose today because it was raining. So we just have a bucket of rainwater and we'll just, there we go. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, so now, uh, honestly, we have a wet side and we have a dry side and now it's full wet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 ab it's about the same. I get mechanical right there. Yeah, the amount of fallback is the exactly the same, whether it's soaking wet or just damp. So, so yeah, that, that strong asterisk of that 7.5, I think, I think dry rock is probably a different story. Slick rock would probably not be impossible. Uh, wet slick rock has proven to be a problem. Let's just try, uh, let's, let's go. You know, we'll send it. Wow. Yeah, we just, just not enough, perhaps not enough rig weight. Oh, self right, man. Pretty good. I would honestly go so far as to bump. I, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're, oh, I didn't drop the pen. We didn't drop the pen. So with some big asterisks next to it, and a tire that is definitely in the conversation, the crystal pin, a tire that is in the conversation for biggest gap between lowest and highest scores, because a couple 7.5s in there, anything that was basically pure forward drive based is hitting about a 7.5. But then the bump is amazing. The, the, the surface transition is pretty good. Uh, we got eight eights in self right and bump that's pretty good so we're talking one of that 2.3 points uh span there it gives us a net total of 79.5 that close to an 80. honestly i think on a dry day we're probably looking at like an 83 84. i think the wet is really holding it back they don't load particularly badly you can see that front the rear has still got quite a bit in it but the fronts were getting more wheel speed into them so we've still got mm, some some goop uh, up in the sidewalls but surprisingly maneuverable uh, i was i was i was genuinely uh, taken back by that i would love to see a heavier wheel tire combo but beyond that uh, i'd love to see this in a 19 you know, give me this in a 465. And I think we're in the conversation because mechanical binding up, they're just so short. And perhaps that's my not being comfortable with that 385, 393. Because anytime I have a rig with a tire that size and I put a class one, even going to a 419, it's a whole new world. So yeah, that, that's where we're at on the height here. Surprised by the forward drive, definitely surprised because it was actually better than I thought it was going to be based on the firmness of the pin. Well, more of the firmness of the carcass and the softness of the pin, but they all kind of worked well together. Genuinely surprised. Good on the bump, good on the self right. There were some glimmers of hope here, and I think that the biggest failing is the 101 millimeter size. Uh, if we were a little bit wider and a little bit taller, I, I think we might have some something approaching magic. So there you go, everybody. Another quick view in the books. The crystal pin. How do I feel about the, the overdrive, underdrive differential? Sometimes I felt like it was noticeable, but I don't know if it was just on the day. I don't know if it was the wet ground. Too many variables to really isolate whether or not I think that the color shift between the front and rear tires was impactful overall on the performance. Uh, I, I leave it up to you. I thank you so much for watching. 
I invite you, one and all, to please tune in again. And in between now and then, please, one and all, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. And in the it, because I have to remember what time we are in history, I must close with this by saying, I hope you all had a lovely April Fool's Day, everybody, because I did my very best. And if and it, I, I hope to get at least a couple comments that missed the joke. So thanks, everybody. They're dog toys. <laughs> They're dog toys on Tamiya semi-truck wheels. And uh, I had a great time. I hope you had a great time. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again, everybody. Farewell from the canyon. Happy April Fool's.